Today I will be once again resetting the NHL with a fantasy draft. When I select a player, I must take into consideration the year they were drafted, because at some point in the draft I will need to take a buddy that was drafted in the same class. I can only take two players from any given draft year, so once I choose their buddy, that year is retired. After selecting 20 players, we will assemble the Avengers in franchise mode and simulate with the hopes of winning a Stanley Cup. Let's find out which squadron I'm going to be drafting on behalf of for today's video. It is the Colorado Avalanche. Here we go. No owner mode. Yes to fantasy draft. And you really thought that I was going to allow you to edit my lines, Jabroni? Well, you're wrong. It doesn't really matter which draft pick we get, so I'm not too concerned. But I'm going to say that we get a low one and go with 22. Am I going to be incredibly wrong? Or will I be... In the ballpark, I was incredibly wrong, but we take that so I can essentially take whoever I want, but then I just have to take one other player drafted in that year. And I'm just thinking of this now, but yeah, I can't reuse a draft year, so I can't take Kucherov from 2011, take another player from 2011, and then reset the cycle, be like, well, I'll take two more buddies from 2011. No. What I will clarify, though, if I didn't already in the intro, is that I don't have to take the other 2011 player right after this pick. I just have to at some point. We are scraping the bottom of the barrel for video ideas. I'm sorry. Part of me wants to start a player be a pro. Part of me doesn't. I almost want to start another goalie be a pro. I don't know. I'm in a confusing spot right now. Regardless, he is 96 overall, so we'll go with Cooch. You kidding me? You know what? We could just finish off the 2011 draft year right now with Dougie Hamilton. Has he simmed well for me? I can't remember. Well, he's joining the team anyway. I do want to take Marchand, but I feel like getting another 2006 might be tough. Flo Giroux is also 2006. You know what? It won't be that bad. Sure, let's go with Brad. He's also right-handed. He's making 10 million, but I can't pass up on him. He simulates too well in this game, so EK65 will be joining our team from the 2008 draft year. Kind of surprised he's still here, but we definitely need a centerman, and Vinny is going to be great for that role. 90 face-offs. Oh. Nope, we will not be drafting Vinny after all. However, Claude Giroux, not a bad consolation prize. Could be our first-line center, and that would also close out 2006. I'm not a big fan of us not having a sniper on the first line, but, you know, it is what it is at this point. Undrafted. Now that's unfortunate. I also can't take Varlamov because we just closed out 2006. All things considered, we're getting a good starter here. 85 overall, Robin Leonard. He was taken in the 09 draft by the Ottawa Senators. So, we're gonna have to find him a draft buddy. I did this recently where I said the 2003 thing, and I believe the comments pointed out there are quite a few 03 players still going, so maybe I'll take good old Joey and hope that we can find one. As a matter of fact, yeah. I will do that. And I found him. Another right-handed offensive defenseman. Ideal? No. Still gonna send it, though. Alright, let's find a left-handed D-man here that is not making nearly $8 million. Actually, we're gonna put that search on hold because I want Charlie Coyle. Taken in 2010. That's a new draft year for us. Do defensive defensemen pair well with offensive defensemen? My chemistry knowledge, franchise knowledge in general in this game? Limited. However... Brian was taken the same year as Robin Leonard, and that would close out 09. So this seems very fitting. Welcome to the team, Doomlin. I was today years old when I found out Brendan Dillon was not drafted. I should do an undrafted players only challenge and see how bad we are. Or maybe we'll be okay, who knows. Here's another one of those 2003 draft players. Jake Wallman, the gritty man himself. 2014 defensive defenseman, so I really hope offensive and defensive defensemen work well together. To me, it makes sense that they would, but then two-way, I don't know. We'll just do it and hope for the best. I really just want to win a cup at this point. I feel like we were on a pretty hot streak in NHL 23 of making it to the conference finals, Stanley Cup finals, winning the cup. NHL 24 has not been treating me very nicely. All right, Gus, you can be Eric Carlson's buddy. You're 85 overall. Sounds pretty good to me. 81 face-offs isn't great. 2012 draft year... Yeah, why not? I just scouted out a pretty good duo to take. They will, combined, eat up $3 million of cap space. Max Pacioretty, two snipers, by the way, from 2007. We also have JVR. 
So let's take both of them. Our cap space is looking tight. 7.8, and we still have to take five players. 2004 is wide open, but can we find someone else is the question. We can, and it actually works out pretty decently because he's a left-handed defender. Two-way D-man, Alex Goligoski. So... I guess we're scooping up two 2004s. Blake Wheeler, we should look into a backup goaltender. I'm glad that I looked because we have three draft picks remaining and we have three draft years to close out. We have Coyle, Lawton, and Wallman from 2010, 2012, and 2014 respectively that don't have a buddy yet. Grubauer was drafted in 2010. But he's also making six million, which we cannot do. There we go, Scott Wedgwood, 2010 to the new Joyzy Devils, and he's making a milli on the dot. Now we are on the hunt for 2012 or 2014. Wow, that's a big series of players all drafted the Holy smokes! I don't want a defenseman. Anderson's making too much, so it comes down to Colton or Teddy. And I think I'm gonna go with Teddy just so that we have a little bit of cap freedom for our final pick. 2014 making 1.9 or less. Let the games begin. Victor Olofsson's definitely not making 1.9. Yeah, no. I should probably sort by forwards also. Don't know why I wasn't already doing that. Limblom might be a possibility. Nope. Sammy Blaze, come on. Yes, amazing. Left winger. Uh, do we need left wingers? Yeah, that actually is perfect. Hello? Is perfect any good? Welcome to the team, Samwise. This is our squadron, and I'm gonna be honest, not entirely sure how I feel about it. Let's go assemble the Avengers and see what the chemistry looks like for these players on your screen right now. We have landed in franchise mode. Edit the lines. Just decent, alright? I don't want any red. Great. We take that all- Jabroni, absolutely no clue how this line's getting a plus one, but I'm kinda here for it. That doesn't change anything, Pavelski, I'm not obviously gonna move Kucherov down to the second line, but just wanted to see. I could possibly bring up Sniper Gus Nyquist to play with two playmakers, and that would be a plus four and a plus two. I am gonna do that. Screw it. Gus, you have been promoted to the first line. And if things are going south, I'll bring Bradley right back up. I am going to save defense for last, because quite frankly, I'm a little bit worried. This is our net-minding duo. They will be tending the crease. I can put it off no longer. Defenseman. That's not horrible. All right, hear me out. We put EK and Dougie together for a plus three, and then we have a dash one and a zero, which to me is better than having two reds. Again, we can just sort of experiment with it. If it's not working, best lines. Kucherov gets the most points with 92, and we receive 45 wins and make it into the playoffs. Be sure to comment your prediction before we get the simulation started, and on that note, let's get it started. While you're commenting your prediction, you should also subscribe. Just saying. And you're already there, so you might as well. I don't make the rules, okay? That three-game winning streak there was huge, but I'm still not really liking what I'm seeing. Might be time to shuffle the old lines real quick. Or maybe not. I don't know. This team is making decisions very difficult. I'm just gonna go do it. Yeah, we're going best lines. So we now have the plus five on line number one, and we have two reds here. Not a fan. All right, hear me out. Charlie Coyle for Claude Giroux, and then we have a plus three and a plus four. Let's try it out. Our first game with the new lines, and we take a 6-4 L, but then we win two in a row. Three? Oh, I thought it was gonna be four. I had a feeling, and that feeling was wrongo. 35 wins at the deadline? I didn't see how that game against the Stars went. But, I will keep the current trading block, and we will enter just to see who's available, but I'm not doing anything. Sam Reinhardt would be a phenomenal player to pick up, so would Patty Kane. But we're not gonna do it. 61 games played, he's got 18 goals, 39 apples, and minus seven. All right, that's it, get me out of here. It's time to see 30 blockbuster trades. No? It was just taking its time, but there are some trades to announce. We got two firsts in that guy, headed to Chicago in exchange for Bo Horvat, Shillington, a third, and a fourth. Patrick Kane, Savard, and Palat all headed to Minnesota for a first, a second, Lakari Maki and Ertl? Lakari Maki. I don't know. It was a valiant effort. Samuel becomes a Montreal Canadian. 
along with a Pittsburgh sixth in exchange for two firsts, Pickering, and a fifth. Okay, clearly whatever lines we have now just gel. And we go on to lose three games in a row, but we bounce back with a win against the Canadians. Oh no. Oh no, we're not getting 45 wins. Are we? We need to basically win out, which is possible. All right, come on. Three more games. Yes? Yes? First in the division? Oh! Let's go! The Colorado Avalanche finished with 97 points, good enough for first in the Central. New Jersey gets the President's Trophy with 113, so we finished first in our division, but we were eighth in the league. So clearly our division just was not that strong. 16 and 17 getting absolutely finessed for the 18th place Buffalo Sabres. The San Jose Sharks did not have a good time. They finished dead last with only 29 wins. This is what the President's Trophy winning team looks like. They got Boldy, Hints, and Pasta. So that first line is lethal. Their second line is solid. They got a decent third line. So overall their team is pretty good. Defensively, they're not too bad either. And their netminder is Forgiev. At least as of when I'm recording this video, he actually stepped it up quite a bit, but I don't know if that's gonna change. The team that finished dead last definitely went for the future in this draft. They got J-Rob, Barzell, and Terry. Their second line is Holtz, Fantilli, and Robertson. Yeah, in probably two, three years time, this squadron is going to be lethal. They drafted some young defensemen as well, so could be some issues when they go to do the contract signing. Ruin! <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Joey Decord was their starting goaltender. I accidentally simmed a day of the playoffs. I went to go here and hit advance day. Love that. We lost. Kucherov led the team with 84 points. He was a dash four though. Bradley was a dash 18. What's going on here? He got 80 points, 72 from Joey, 68 from Giroux. EK65 did put up some offense. Holy trombones in a tuba factory. We did not get goaltending. I mean, to be fair, maybe our offensive defensemen didn't really support them all that much, but that's bad. You can really tell the difference between the offensive-minded defenders and the not-so-offensive-minded defenders. Hellebuck with 40 wins and a 907 save percentage, 311 GAA. Cam Talbot and Connor Ingram. Both have 38 wins, 918 apiece, nearly the same GAA. I thought they were going to be the same overall, but no, Talbot's one higher. No defenseman really went insane this year. Point a game out of Quinn Hughes, which is very solid. He would lead the charge, 77 from Kale McCarr. And your Art Ross winner is Sidney the Kidney playing for the Washington Capitals. What a look that is. He also had 52 goals. He's not going to get the Rocket with Sharks. I see Pasta here with 56, so it's likely going to him. And on that note, it is playoff time. Oh, they do have a good team. This is a little bit scary. I can't lie to you. Taves, 92 faceoffs on the third line. Zabeniad with Ben and Vitrano as their second. They got Pappy. Defensively, they're also pretty solid. Mackenzie Wieger, 88. And Markstrom, the starting goaltender. We are in one here. I would say first three games, everybody knows the rules, but we already simulated one. So I'm just going to sim the next two and see how it goes. That is a massive dub followed up by another massive dub. And they can't win over the next two games. So you already know what I'm going to do. Ooh, will they push a game seven though is the question. No, they don't. And next up, we have the Minnesota Wild. These guys don't look as good, which is scarier. Wyatt Johnston, this guy has been an absolute force. Joel Farabee and Will Nye. Then they got Patty Kane, Rory, and Sam Bennett. He's probably going to hurt some people. Good defensive core. They've got Owen Power, who's 21. Lundqvist, who's 23. So not only are they good now, but they are going to be good too. Aiden Hill, their starting goaltender. Let's take them down. First three games, you know the rules. Come on, Avs. That is, oh, okay. We're down to one. I thought it was going to be 3-0. But thankfully, we snuck out a dub. They're not winning the next two. They're not. I'm simming the next two games. Boom. Ooh, we need to push a game seven here. We give them a power play the first second of the game. How's that possible? They're not gonna like it. Patrick Kane with a peeper goal. So that is not a good start for us. We're being outshot beyond belief. What are we doing? Can you guys at least play like your season is on the line? No? All right, well, Minnesota is rent-free at the moment. I feel like I should do a draft soon when I have more time. That's like a multi-year ordeal. 
And I try to take players that will obviously grow and become better. Yep, we just got outplayed massively. 40 shots to 33. Who'd they have in net again? Aiden Hill, a 33 save shutout is bonkers. Yeah, I would say he deserves first star. Well, we might as well sim the rest of the playoffs. Your Stanley Cup champions are the Tampa Bay Lightning. Hartford Wolf Pack getting the Calder. Oh crap, I forgot I normally sim to the finals so that we can have a look at both teams. Totally forgot. It was Tampa and Nashville, so we're gonna have to do this the old-fashioned way. Steven, 78 points on the season, and he was playing with Huberdeau, I would imagine. They had Adam Fox, Alex Tuck, Couturier, Theodore, Cam Atkinson. They do have a very solid-looking team here. Stewie Skinner in the cage, 85 overall. Tampa Bay had Talbot because, of course, they did. They must have taken Ovechkin very late because he was there way longer than he should have been. They have Pedersen, Larkin, Besser... This is a Stanley Cup winning team right here. Yeah, fair enough. Defensively, they had Byram, Nurse, OEL, Manson. Very good team. Holy crap, Pavelski had nearly a 30% for his shooting percentage. That is out of control. Eight goals in 12 games, 11 points from him, Cooch, and Brad. 10 from Dougie as well, so he had a good playoff run. I think our downfall this time might have been too many offensive defensemen. And I do gotta start taking goalies earlier. I have to. I don't know why I keep not doing that. Holy crap, Cam. Why don't you just save some for the rest of us? A 928 and a 234. Good to see Flower have a final run there. Made it to the conference finals. Shea Theodore and Roman Yossi both had 15 points, but Yossi did it in four less games. And your Conn Smythe winner, Brock Besser. 27 points. I feel like it could be a toss-up between him and Talbot, but it's definitely going to Broccoli. The next person was Ovechkin who was point a game, and then they have Petey, but... Holy crap, Patrick Kane, 23 points in 19 games? Stamkos as well, 25 in 21. Team awards are as follows. We pretty much knew them anyway. Sid the Kid wins the art and the heart, keeping the combo intact as a Washington Capital. That's beautiful. McCarr gets the Norris. Thought they would have gave it to Hughes for sure. Lady Bing goes to Jeff Skinner. And Bedsy gets the Calder. Conn Smythe is awarded to Brock Besser. Jeremy Swayman gets the Vesna. Georgiev with the Jennings. Borgen awarded the Bill Masterton. Morales gets the Jack Adams this season. Another couple of trophies for Sydney, Ted Lindsay, and the Selkie. And the Rocket Richard goes to Pasta. This is the playoff tree. I encourage you to try this draft challenge yourself. Let me know how yours went in the comments. If you have draft ideas, also leave a comment for that. Because... We're running out of ideas here. Let me know what you think about starting a Be A Pro, if I should do a player, if I should start up a fresh goalie. I don't know. If you subscribe, your favorite player is winning the Rocket Richard next year. I don't make the rules. And on that note, I'll see you soon.